just starting your journey in entomophagy, these are the five books I think you need to have on your bookshelf now. Hi, welcome to the Ento Podcast. My name is Ross, and if this is your first time on this channel, and you want to keep up to date with the latest Ento news, interviews, and all things insect as animal feed and food, start right now by clicking subscribe, and remember to press the bell so you don't miss a thing. Let's get on with the show. Okay, the first book in my list is one I think everyone getting into entomophagy needs to have. Animal Insects, Future Prospects for Food and Feed Security by the FAO. Okay, it's not really a book, it's more of a pamphlet, but at 201 pages, I'm classifying it as a book. So this was written by the Food and Agriculture Organization for the United Nations, um, along with the guys at Wageningen University in 2013. So, FAO, Edible Insect um, book, is a free PDF, um, one other, another reason why it's on here is if you're just starting out on this, a lot of the books can be expensive and there's a lot of rubbish out there. This was the starting point and is the starting point for a lot of things that you'll see, and it's free. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, but if you want to have a look at the FAO, I'll put links to them as well. It's 201 pages. So we have a look through some of the topics that are covered within here. Darren Whiteham, who the FAO are, the role of insects within just the ecology of the world, cultures that already eat them, collecting them from the wild, some of the possible threats if we do just stick to wild cultivation, some conservation management in there, semi-cultivated, and if we come along, so section 5 is where you will see a lot of people's information um, whether it's the water usage, greenhouse gases, um, and feed conversion. Later on in the book, they go through the livelihoods of people who already raise them or collect them. And then down towards the end, we come to the the disgust factor, which is the one thing that we all have to look for when we're setting up our new companies and setting up new products. Is It's all it's fine telling the public that everything's great, that it's all got these huge ecological benefits and what have you but for us in the west it's still an insect and you still get the yuck so there's other graphs there's pictures and i say free book but pdf download 201 pages it's got to be my number one because it started near of everything in the west the second book on this list is really love this book my copy is a the hardback copy um, and it's, I don't know whether you can pick these up in here, um, but it's full of notes, underlines, um, when I got it, this was probably, yeah, this was my second book I think I, I actually got on the subject. So it's written by... Daniela Martin, um, she's from Girl Meets Bug, and this book tells the story of her as she travels the world on her entomophagy journey. There's Daniela there. I'll put a link to uh, her website, Girl Meets Bug. Um, so if you watch this, just drop her eye and just say hi. So we have recipes in the, the back from some of her travels. Crick and leathers. There's some of the the recipes that we got is uh, wax moth taco, sweet and salty wax worms. section on some of the insects that are edible and again this I mean, this is coming out at we ignore that uh, 247 pages uh, 
essential list of edible insects. It's got how to grow them. It's a really good book. So Daniela became fascinated with insect cuisine while conducting anthropological fieldwork in uh, the Yucatan in Mexico. And while living amongst the Maya and studying traditional indigenous food and medicine and culture, she learned that the ancient people of the region used to supplement their diets with insects, uh, particularly because of the lack of game. So intrigued, she began to research and started to try and search for insects that she could try. So within this book, we sort of go to San Francisco, where she meets up with Don Baguito, Don Baguito uh, which was a food cart back then. And then we travel to Copenhagen, where she meets the experimental tasters at Noma Nordic Lab, before heading to Asia and a trip to Thailand's version of Costco, and a bug eating club in Tokyo. So within here she does lots of t funny stories. She just explores the science and history behind their use. So it's it's if someone's new getting into this, then you put off by the first book, which was a little bit heavy. This would be another good choice. The third book I think all beginners need is Bugs for Beginners. The most complete guide to teach you how to cook edible insects. And it's by Michaela Dezova. So the bad point about this one, get out of the way first, is it's only available on in Kindle. Which is a little annoying because it, it is a really good book. And I would like to have the option to have it as a soft back or a uh, ring bound uh, little pocket book. So this was published uh, June last year, uh, and I say only available on Kindle, so you can just head across to Amazon, um, there's a link in the show notes, and it's a Bugs for Beginners. Um, there is a website for this, which is bug, bugs, the number four, and then beginners.com, um, but again, that will just send you off to Amazon to purchase the book. It's got similar aspects to the book we'll cover in book four, um, and a lot of the other books that we'll have put reviews up for. They'll all start off with a brief outline of how everyone got started. This one is then split into the different meals. It says breakfast, soups, breads, starters, entrees, desserts, drinks, and then we go into bug pair. We've got a lot of different insects in here. There's a section on bug and wine pairing. Ali Moore helped with with that one. We go through to sort of uh, taste where she lists the insects that are available and sort of matches against a taste that's out there so you can try and incorporate them into your own food. We go through places to buy them. Yeah, this is a, a really good book to start with again I think it's a, about seven or eight quid on Amazon so this is a really good one for beginners there's some nice easy recipes in here the only reason this doesn't wouldn't get sort of a 10 out of 10 or a five star review is the fact that it's, it's only available on Kindle book four on my list is the insect an edible field guide by Stephen Gates this one's a um, so in between the others, this is 2017 publication. Um, again, I believe it's only available in hardback. And this was a, a tenner. Uh, again, so is all the others. Um, I'll put links to everything in these show notes. So Stephen Gates, for people who don't know, uh, maybe the name sounds familiar. But he was the guy behind the BBC's Eat Bugs, um, or Can Eating Bugs Save the World documentary. Really good. And in the UK, he also does a lot more uh, food science experiments and a lot of stuff with kids. The reason I like this book is, although it's a, it says it's a um, it's a field guide, it is a little bit large. It's just over sort of my hand in size. So if you've got cargo pants, it's fine. It'll fit in there. Or you stick it in your backpack. So 
again, this one has got the usual introduction, why you insects, ben beneficial um, effects in the environment and what have you. And then the thing I like is that Stefan split this up into areas. So we've got a section on the more common insects in the UK, uh, Southern Europe, we go across to Africa, Asia, South America, North America, and then Oceania, and um, Japan's thrown in there as well. So if you're traveling along, traveling around, looking for things on your journey, try this and see what you can find. Um, again, so there's the dangers. So if we look at the speckled bush cricket in the UK and Northern Europe, you can see it gets a bit of background on the insect, what it tastes like, um, countries it's found in, habitats, whether it's dangerous or not, and how to cook it. And then it gives a recipe. So we've got, uh, Woodlouse cocktail. We go further in. We've got. See, I could have done this when I tried the uh, Mopane worms. I had a bunch of out of a dried one and thought you just ate it dried, like you do crickets. Um, it nearly broke my teeth. Horrible. Uh, it's only later you realise you you soak them and you generally have them in stews and what have you. But this is yeah, really good. Honey wasps, dobbers, and flies. So that's book number four. And book five on my list for beginners is. Final book on my list is going to be a bit of a surprise. And it's not one I've seen anyone talk about before, so you won't you wouldn't have seen it on anyone else's list out there. This book is Beetle McGrady Eats Bugs. It's by Megan McDonald and it's a children's book. So why do I like this book so much and think people should have it? There's a couple of reasons. One, if you've got a fussy child or a youngster in their house, leaving this book around or reading it to them um, I think might help them. It might help show that eating insects isn't weird or strange. Second is because it was published in 2005. So if you think about that, the first book we did was the FAL Guide. And that was published in 2013. And that one book alone, I believe, is responsible for the majority of the firms that are out there busy promoting entomophagy at the minute. This book was published eight years before any of that started. Eight years, Megan McDonald decided to write a book, a children's book, about eating insects. I mean, just, oh, that's just, boom, mind-blowing that someone would take such a risk at that time. It comes in hardback. Uh, the only place I've seen it is Amazon. Uh, you may be a able to get it. I mean this one had to come from the US so you may be able to find it in uh, thrift stores out there, uh, charity stores, what have you. Amazon still have it and it, it ranges from £2 to a tenner. Um, but I, I think it's well worth it. Pictures are great um, and it's the short book. It's 32 pages. Uh, I, I mean, even if we just look at the the back page here for a second, and we've got some tips on eating beetles from sort of curing bad breath down to uh, like PB and J, try B PB and A for a change, peanut butter and ants. It's just so ahead of its time. The illustrations are good. There's
the really nice sort of colourful illustrations, nice fun story. It basically the story is about Beetle, who's the little girl there, who wants to be a an ex brave explorer, dreams about being a pioneer and how all of that's changed when it was a a fun with food week in Mr. Wrigley's science class and how an ant changed all of that along with the help of Chef Susan. Um, you see some more of the pictures there. Really good book. Nice illustrations. Like I say, I keep saying, massively ahead of its time. Um, and I think it's one that if you're starting out, grab a copy. So like I say, it's really fun, fun book. I like say, there's these are all books I have. They're not that expensive, and if you're just looking to get into it, um, want a bit more information, you can't go wrong with these five books I've just given you now. So thanks again for watching, and if you think that there are books that I've missed, anything that you would like to add, or if you, even if you've read these books, leave a comment below, and remember to click subscribe, and press the bell so you don't miss the next episode. Till then, it's Ross saying, to for now.